Hey everyone, and welcome. So if you're building anything for the web, let's be real, you're not just writing lines of code, you're building a system. And today we're gonna break down exactly how you can design systems that are strong, that can scale, and that are really built to last. Okay, let's just dive right in. I mean, this is the question, right? It's what keeps developers up at night. You finally push that new feature live, traffic starts to spike, and you're just wondering, is this thing gonna hold up? That anxiety is so real. But the answer isn't just about writing better code. It's about having a much smarter plan from the very beginning. And that is the absolute key right there. You see, a great system is kind of like a great building. You would never ever start pouring concrete for a skyscraper without a super detailed blueprint, right? So why would you start writing thousands of lines of code without a solid system design? This plan, this is your guide to building something that actually works. So here's the roadmap for today. We're going to start by laying the foundation. Then we'll get into drafting the actual architectural blueprint. After that, we'll talk about building and improving the thing. And by the end, you'll be all set to start your own design journey. Okay, first up, phase one, the foundation. Now this whole part is pure investigation. Before you even start thinking about, you know, which database to use or what your API should look like, you have to become a complete expert on the problem you're trying to solve. And this phase really just boils down to two absolutely critical first steps. First, you have to deeply understand the problem. And second, you have to clearly, clearly identify the scope of your solution. If you get these two things right, everything else that follows becomes so much easier. So for step one, it's time to put on your detective hat. Who are we building this for? Are we talking about a thousand users or are we talking about 10 million? Because that's going to tell you right away if you need something like a load balancer. What do they actually need? Is the system going to be mostly reading data or writing a ton of it? That could point you toward a SQL or a NoSQL database. And what are our limits? You know, does it have to respond in under 100 milliseconds? Well, that probably means you need a caching layer like Redis. This info is absolute gold. Now, what I love about this is that right-hand column. Step two is all about drawing a firm line in the sand. Honestly, defining what your system won't do is just as crucial as defining what it will. This is how you stop scope creep dead in its tracks. For example, you might decide your system will handle all the core business logic, but it will not handle its own payment processing. You're just going to use Stripe for that. Or maybe it will serve up user profiles, but it will not have a real-time chat feature. Making these calls now can save you literally months of work down the line. All right, so with that solid foundation in place, we can move on to phase two, the blueprint. This is where we shift gears from understanding the what and the why to actually designing the how. Now we get to be the architects of our system. And this phase involves three pretty key actions. First, looking at what other people have already built. Second, creating our own first sketch of the architecture. And third, sharpening that sketch into a really detailed, refined plan. Let's talk about step three. You know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Say you're building a photo sharing app. Go look at the high-level architecture of Instagram or Flickr. How did they solve big problems like image storage and content delivery networks? Researching existing systems isn't cheating, it's just smart. You're leveraging the collective knowledge of the entire industry to avoid all the common mistakes. And here we go. This is where the real architecture work begins. You start with a simple high-level sketch. Just think boxes and arrows on a whiteboard. Let's say we're designing an e-commerce site. You'd sketch out the client, an API gateway to route requests, a load balancer, and then separate microservices for users, products, and orders, each with its own database. Then you iterate. You start asking questions. Okay, what happens if the order service goes down? Maybe we need a message queue like RabbitMQ to make it more resilient. Hmm, how do we make product searches super fast? Well, maybe we add a dedicated search service using Elasticsearch. You just keep refining this over and over until the design satisfies every single requirement we identified back in phase one. Okay, on to phase three, build and improve. Because let's face it, a design document is pretty useless if it just sits in a folder collecting digital dust. This phase is all about taking that blueprint and turning it into a real living system that can keep evolving over time. These final two steps are, I would argue, the most important for the long-term health and success of your system. It's not just about getting it launched, it's about making sure it's understandable and adaptable for years to come. Step six, you gotta document everything. And I know, I know, nobody loves writing documentation, but trust me, it is non-negotiable. Think of it as a gift to your team and honestly, a gift to your future self. 
because when something inevitably breaks six months from now, this document is going to be your most valuable tool for figuring out why a decision was made and how to fix the problem. And that leads us perfectly into the final step. Your system is live. Congratulations. But the job is not done. Now, you're going to use tools like Prometheus or Datadog to monitor things like latency and error rates. You're going to find out that one particular database query is super slow under heavy load and it's creating a bottleneck. A great design is a living design. It's one that you are constantly measuring and improving to meet whatever new challenges come its way. So there you have it. We've walked through the entire process, all the way from a vague problem to a living, breathing system. So let's just boil this all down to the core principles you can take with you on your own design journey. Just try to remember these four things. First, always understand the requirements, the what, before you even start designing the how. Second, embrace iteration. Your first sketch of the architecture is almost never your best one. Third, document your design decisions. It's a true sign of a professional. And finally, always remember that your system is never really done. It's always, always evolving. At the end of the day, good system design isn't some kind of magic. It's a structured way of thinking. And it's what transforms you from someone who just writes code into a true architect of scalable, resilient applications. So the only question left is, what amazing system are you gonna design next?